What's going on, everybody? It's the Big Dog Podcast, and this is Josh Wilson. Got my guy Jonathan in the studio. What's up, Jonathan? Nothing much. Hanging out. Nice. We're going to do uh, December Q&A today. So we did one last month, and uh, people liked it. I don't know why people cared what my opinion was on some random things, but uh, people seem to enjoy the show. And so Jonathan has some items for us to talk about today, some of which I probably will care about, some of which I'll talk about anyway and I could probably give two shits about. Um, well, we're going to start off with one that I know that you care about. What's that? Real close to home. So last episode that we did the Q&A on, we were talking about Notre Dame football mm -hmm. um, and your love for it, my disdain for it, but we're yeah, not going to get into it. Yep. Brian Kelly, your head coach, left since we last talked Bounced. about it. Just Bounced. straight up dipped. Uh, here's the deal, man. So Logan, my phone starts getting blown up. Logan is FaceTiming me. He's sending me stuff on Instagram. He's texting me. I'm like, son, what's, what's up? Brian Kelly's leaving. He said, man, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't leaving. He goes, it's all over. He's leaving. He's going to LSU. Logan, son, it's not. Wait till it's confirmed. I don't believe this yet. So I cannot believe he's going to LSU. Like three minutes later, like, oh, snap. He's, yeah, he's going to LSU. He's gone. Not a good situation. And I mean, more details have emerged. Yeah. Where everyone's like, oh, he couldn't have turned down. Yeah, I don't job. think he could have. And, and really, it's just kind of the same thing when you're looking at Lincoln Riley at US going to USC from Oklahoma, right? Two great programs, Oklahoma, Notre Dame. Two other great programs. Like, I am not a USC fan. We talked about this in the last Q&A episode, which is funny. However, USC, even in its current state, I truly believe is one of the great programs in the country. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it is a tremendous opportunity. And not that Oklahoma isn't. I think Oklahoma is also one of those top opportunities in the country if you're a college football coach. Yeah, but Southern Cal. However, yeah. that being said, and then I'll jump on the Brian Kelly thing. Lincoln reportedly, okay, reportedly, not reportedly, reportably, <laughs> Lincoln has two homes in Oklahoma. Yep. USC purchased for a half a million a piece over stated value of the home. Yep. Cool. Even saving all those realtor fees. That's dope. Then they bought him a $6 million house in LA. Now people are like, Oh my God, they bought Lincoln Riley a $6 million house in LA. Let's be real. In LA is $6 million house, like a shotgun shack. You know, it's about a thousand square feet, one door straight out the back, the front, two bedrooms on the side, living room, kitchen, all shared. That's 6 million in LA. But nonetheless, they spent 6 million on a house for the guy. They're paying him bonkers amount of money. And then rumor has it. Family's got used to the jet 24 seven. Absolutely insane. So if they ever miss Norman, Oklahoma, they could just fly. Right. Back. Like, I think I missed that burger joint. Let's get on the plane. How go, disrespectful go is that? Imagine you just look up and you're like, oh, well, there's Coach's jet. He, yeah. I guess he's back in town. He wanted to see friends for brunch. So <laughs> he flew in. So. But, I mean, so I get that. Like, Coach Riley was talking about how it was just a whirlwind, like just, just how it came about. And But my thing is, if you know the guy you want, make an offer they can't say no to. He could not say no to that. And people forget players aren't the only ones that are competitive. Players are not the only ones looking for those next steps in their career. And if you're a high performing, like you execute at the highest level, which Lincoln Riley has done, he's got Heisman Trophy winners. He's got big wins. He's got a great program. Coach Kelly in Notre Dame, he's been there 12 years. That's nuts. I'm like, this dude's going to die at Notre Dame. We're going to get back the championship with Coach Kelly. And I think they're, they're closer than they've ever been. The thing that's wild, though, is he's just as competitive as everybody else. He has his career path. He has his own individual goals, hopes, dreams for what's important to him. And I think when you are consistently winning, which they have, I think over the last four years, you know, they're like 54 and six or something crazy like that. He's winning nonstop. 
I'm holding off so many comments hey, about it strength doesn't matter. and schedule. Oh, get the fuck out. You, know, you can just stop with that crap. <laughs> no. it, 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 you play who's on the schedule, right? Yeah. And honestly, teams being off the last couple of years that historically are very strong, yeah. these schedules are made 10, 15 years in advance. We don't know if people are going to start shitting the bed. The whole ACC transition and that agreement, I mean, it is what it is. What are you going to do? It is what it is. I mean, you play who's in front of you, and you win. The r- until it's the college football playoff. Until it's the college football playoff. But my thing is this, though. You still got to get there. You definitely you do. You still got to get there. So And have fans that travel and all the other things. It doesn't matter. But the thing is with Coach Kelly, for me, I was – Logan's very upset because since he's four years old, all he knows is Coach Kelly and Notre Dame. So Coach Kelly is Notre Dame football to Logan. Understandable. To me, I've been through Willingham. I've been through Weiss. I've been through, I mean, I grew up with Holtz. So everybody was just trash to me. Mm -hmm. And then Kelly, I'm like, I can get on board with this guy. But that's a hell of a deal. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's the highest paid coach in college right now. That's his new deal. Yes. And the incentives. He's got 59 hours a year of the jet, bottom of the house. Here's the funny thing. Baton Rouge, they bought Coach a house or give him a loan for a house, interest-free, $1.5 million. L.A., they buy you a $6 million house. I mean, he couldn't not go. Every coach, the last three coaches that have been there, what? National championship. Recruiting down there, insane. So much talent out of Louisiana. Hell of a lot easier to get kids to come to LSU than it is to South Bend, Indiana. And yeah, you don't have the restrictions. So the reason why I brought up this topic is because ultimately I feel as if even though they're making more money than most people, college football coaches are still employees of Uh the school. And we have talked about the subject of finishing well, wherever you're at, Yep. whenever um, you're finishing a season in your life where you're at a certain job. And just according to the Sports Illustrated Brian Kelly has had a terrible, terrible history of leaving jobs. I don't think that um, now, Mm -hmm. maybe like the last, maybe five to 10 years, but particularly the last five years, I don't think anybody in major sports, be it college or pro, can finish well. I think it's next to impossible. And by finish well, I mean the appropriate conversations. Yeah. How quickly things get leaked how quickly deals have to come together. Like there's no part of me and I could just be totally wrong, but there's no part of me that believes coach Kelly's preference was that this would get leaked. And that's how Notre Dame and his team would find out. Mm -hmm. The one one thing, the one thing that comes up consistently though, in this article that they're talking about is that most of the time coaches are reached out like they're, um contacted before this their season ends with their former team yeah so they kind of have a chance to let the athletic director and the team know hey other teams are calling that's usually the general procedure for people who want to finish well and according to this article one of the funniest quotes i think i've read in a sports article brian kelly said when he was coaching division two grand valley state I didn't come to Grand Valley thinking I was going to end my career here in coaching. I thought this was one of the few stops along the way, but I found a diamond in the rough. I have to, I have what I consider the finest job in college football. I have the opportunity to compete for national championships and not have the trappings of the division one arena. I have absolutely found the job I want here at Grand Valley state. Yeah. But that's because you think that's the option until all of a sudden you can afford, look, the Camry is a great car. Camry is a great car, but if all of a sudden everything's staying the same, I can drive a Benz and nothing in my life changes, but I can choose a Benz over a Camry. I'm choosing a Benz. But if that's not an option, my Camry is perfectly fine. It's the best car on the planet. It is the best car for me until it's not until it's not. And also you have to pander a little bit as a head coach. Oh, for sure. There's things again, that you need you to say. you are an employee, right? Yeah. You want them to believe because the school is no more loyal to him than he is in return to them. Like, as long as he's winning, we want you. But if he's not winning, he ain't going to be around. They're not going to sit him down and be like, hey, coach, you know, we're really kind of not happy with this four and eight season, 2016, I believe. You know, what? 
obviously it didn't meet standards. But if that junk starts off that following year the same way, Monday morning, see you later. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think coaches are going to say what they need to to say in those moments. Two weeks ago, he's in a conference and they talked to him about the USC job and all that. And he's like, look, love Notre Dame. We're not going anywhere. We're not doing anything. He goes, but I think he said Mike Tomlin said it. So unless a magic fairy, you know, fairy godmother shows up with a $250 million check and waves the wand. Yeah. I have to let my, my wife review the check first. Oh, no, that was who was I, that? I think he said it was Mike Tomlin who said it. Um, no, Mike Tomlin said about the LSU job. He was like, there is literally no amount of money right. or a booster check with, or a booster with the check large enough to get me to go to LSU. So Kelly was referencing, okay, then he wasn't giving his direct quote. He referenced mm -hmm. what Tomlin had said. And he yeah. goes, if someone showed, if Fairy Godmother showed up with a $250 million check, I guess I'd have to let my wife look at it to make sure it's legit. Some semblance of that is what he said. Uh, but for me, when he said that, I'm like, that was the heads up. And I think you and I talked about this off, off show the other day. Um, that was the heads up to Notre Dame. Hey, let's have a conversation this week about my compensation. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that little hint. And the athletic director, Swarbrick, Swarbrick, Jack Swarbrick, I think it is. He said, you know, he wasn't surprised by it. They've been there 12 years. And so back to the finishing well thing that you said. I think it's impossible for major coaches and major programs to ever end well, just because of how information gets communicated so quickly and no one can keep their mouth shut about anything. Stuff gets leaked. It's impossible. But I do think that 12 years anywhere is a crazy amount of time. For and sure. I don't think that Brian Kelly shorted Notre Dame at all. I think he had, they had a hundred percent of his focus that he brought that, program back made it relevant modernized it because it was bad it was really really bad and whether people in notre dame there's no in between there's no one indifferent you either hate notre dame or you love notre dame i know no one who's indifferent and then that's cool that's fine i think that's sports um but he was fully committed he was there i mean he gave it his all i did see something that was really funny um uh lincoln riley we did something the other day about, oh, we're going to make USC is going to be the mecca of college football. This dude retweeted it. He's a defensive end, I think, at Oklahoma. And he said, he told us that last week. <laughs> that's absolutely hilarious. No, it's amazing. But, but that's, that's it, right? I, I don't know. I think it might just be me. But since I do really view these coaches as employees, since I've been like around the UVA football program, sure. I've kind of seen coaches leave. Our strength coach even left for Oklahoma to work with Lincoln Riley after okay. my second year. I just think that finishing well applies to them in the same sense as it does like one of our employees, you know, even though they're making millions of dollars and it's a little bit of a different thing. It just seems as if he has a history of it. He's left uh, central Michigan. A history Cincinnati, of it. Yeah. Cincinnati years, in the like, same way. Notre Dame 12 years. And like, I'm not the person I was 12 years ago. You're not the person you were 12 years ago. You're a grown man. Now you're a little kid, but like, I don't think a, a history, what he has a history of also though, is turning programs around or around and creating winners. That's what he has a history of. Yeah. And, and how that transition takes place as an employee. I just, I don't know. I wish that could be different. I also understand though, the timing dynamics of it. You know, if he's like, Hey, I'm going to wait and see what happens with these playoffs. That opportunity may not be there. That is very true. You know, it may not be there. I think that Notre Dame supposedly probably going to announce today Marcus Freeman's going to be the new head coach. He's a defensive coordinator who came in uh, this year. Dude's a beast. Players love him. Um, fans love him. School loves him. Like this guy's, he was, he came from Cincinnati. He was defense coordinator there. He's a player at Ohio state. Dude's great. Defense is on point this year. Um, has done a really, really, really great job. And he's kind of already been that talk the last couple of years of a head coach candidate. I don't know that he wouldn't have not got the job if there was more time for this to play out. But I think there is concern that I'm praying for a couple of upsets this weekend so that Notre Dame can bump up into these playoffs. All right. I thought they were already at number four. They're number six in the, the, the playoff voting. Well, they're so, learning. 
<laughs> so we've got Oklahoma State who needs to get beat up by Baylor. I need um, uh, Georgia just needs to go ahead and beat Bama. All right, which I can't see them losing. Uh, Georgia is so ridiculously strong. Um, you know, so we need these a couple pieces to fall so that a couple of those in the top four can move out of the way and we can bump up into the top four. I think if there was just some random interim coach, I think that would factor into voting a little bit and they don't give Notre Dame an opportunity yeah. at the playoffs. I think if they name a coach and he's in place, if the opportunity presents itself, they're going to be good. Not to mention, dude deserves a head coaching job anyway. The dude is a beast. So you don't think they're going to continue the Cincinnati pipeline in a different way and bring over the guy who's coaching at Cincinnati now? Um, if they weren't on the verge of playoffs, I think that maybe that conversation, they'd allow that conversation to play out. But that conversation isn't happening because they're in the playoffs right now, since he is, as long as they win. They're in the playoffs. Yep. And so I don't, that conversation isn't going to take place with them yet. And I can't hate on you guys for strength of schedule. Do you know who Cincinnati has to play? Like I watched them play Tulane the other day. Just, what even is that football game? I mean, Notre Dame had a close call week two against Toledo and I was on the verge of not being a fan ever again. Ah, Toledo Rockets. <sighs> and who knew? But anyway, it's like, it, it's just tough. But, like, uh, the offense coordinator, he said he's staying. Tommy Reese, he was a quarterback at Notre Dame, and he's done a really, really good job. He said he's staying. Marcus Freeman is staying, both of which reportedly have been recruited to come to LSU with Coach Kelly. Yeah. But they're saying they're staying. And the thing is, that's a risk on their part, too. So they're telling Coach Kelly, hey, I'm not coming, so he's going to keep moving forward to building his team. They're saying they're staying at Notre Dame. If they bring in an outside coach, not a good look. there's no guarantee that they're keeping – Kelly's guys. Yeah. So there's a lot of pieces that come in. I just think that the climate of college football, major college football, does not allow coaches to finish well. To finish well. I just don't. And you know, I hate not finishing well. Yes. But I get it in this circumstance. Okay. Fair point. So, Fair point. So go Irish. An, an, <laughs> I'm going to let it go. <laughs> another, another story of not finishing well that we can definitely agree on is actor Jussie Smollett. His case has gotten underway. Um, he left the show Empire after really not finishing well. For anyone who does not know, Jussie Smollett was a victim of a purported hate crime, and it turned out to be viciously false. And he is now under investigation and now under trial for um, lying and misleading the police. Um. <laughs> and off the show Empire, if that matters to people. <laughs> I love that show. I love Empire. That I, was great. I don't know the difference between <laughs> Empire and Power, and a lot of people in my community don't like that. I don't, look, my Tesla was named Cookie. Reference right over the head. No. Okay. Never mind. I get a little bit of the reference. Never, never mind. Like Lucius, is that a, is that another reference? Uh huh. Yeah, there it is. There. It is. Um. So, <laughs> uh, this thing with Smollett, um, I, it's ridiculous, man. It's it's terrible. Um, my my thoughts on this might surprise you, actually. Um, like I feel so bad for the dude that he's so messed up in the head. Yeah. That he thought this wasn't a good idea. There's a lot of steps because the way it supposedly happened was he was upset that his employers uh -huh. at the studio yep. were not taking hate letters. Mail. Toward, yeah. Hate, yeah, hate mail yeah. towards him seriously. Yep. Valid complaint. 100%. There's like a thousand steps before faking a legitimate hate crime, though. <laughs> I feel like. Yeah. And like, I mean, they've pieced this. And then my thing is, my understanding, the dude has not just come out and said, hey. I did this. Like he is standing by. Oh yeah. I mean, ten, no, this 10 toes down. This <laughs> was, this happened to me and they've legitimately aligned all the GPS coordinates of phones. Yeah, They're going they through doing a, messages. doing a run through, you know, practicing this. They, it, it, the prosecution managed to get both <laughs> of the brothers who did this attack back from Nigeria. How often do you extract somebody <laughs> from Nigeria? It's, we would have gotten all of those princes by now. It, if that was the case. Oh my God. It just, honest, honestly, it's like the saddest thing. I yeah. just hate it when people go so freaking crazy. And I'm just wondering, like, how, 
how do you get to that point where you know what? Let's do a couple run throughs on this hate crime. Go practice it a couple times. Make sure we're good. You know where to be. You know when. This is how we're gonna do it. Real scripted. Yeah. We call this, call my manager real quick. Hey. Text me, text me after saying you're so sorry it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the whole, I mean, here's the thing. He is a hell of an actor. Very good. You don't really sneak this by multiple news outlets. I mean, this thing was international news. Yeah. This was bad news. Yeah. And then all of a sudden. Maybe he should start writing scripts since acting is not. I mean, he might have a little time. Yeah. But he ain't got to go to jail. I mean, they're just going to get like probation and his, whatever his but deposition wasn't even recorded apparently like they didn't record it like on video it's like it's a mess it's, i don't know a whole lot about it i just i remember two years ago reading about it and whatnot and i saw that the trial had started and i think where i'm at right now with it is i just it's sad i'm sad that he felt that was the way to go yeah. And for anybody that actually feels any of that makes any type of sense is, is just crazy to me. Yeah. And man, I just, um, I hate all the time that's been wasted on it. I hate all the money that's been wasted on it. Taken away from legitimate, yeah. problems. legitimate problems, like legitimate hate crimes. Yeah. Cause we know that's a real thing. Like no one's saying like, that's not real, but I just think there's enough stuff that legitimately needs the attention of wherever you are, as far as law enforcement goes, this was not a good use of resources, time, or dollars. No. A terrible look for a fight, I think, in his mind. Yeah, he was trying like to fight. A struggle. And that's the thing. What concerns me the most is that, one, he wasn't hurt out at first, so that's upsetting. But at the right. same time, it's like the leap in logic to go from, hey, maybe I should go public with this hate mail, maybe right, yeah. raise awareness, to... I should hire two of my friends to jump me and pour bleach on me I, whilst holding a Subway sandwich. Great ad for Subway, this uh, whole story. It's a mess. Next, Jonathan. Next, I want to know how you feel about holiday movies, Christmas movies, since this episode will be dropping near the holiday season. Um, I love them. I favorite? love them. Do you have a favorite? National Lampoons. It's a good one. Christmas Vacation. Mine is Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer course phenomenal it's solid um no i mean i love christmas movies i think we've already um we watched the grinch we've watched we'll watch elf we're gonna decorate the tree tonight we'll have elf on in the background um while we're decorating i love all the old school like cartoon ones that are just terribly made yeah you know um like, rudolph yeah, the og frosty rudolph. the snowman like the og cartoons i mean they are bad they're probably like i don't know I'm sure there's parts in there that would like piss people off and like offend them, but they oh, play yeah. them on like, you know, major like CBS, NBC, ABC. They play them every year. My favorite thing are the ridiculous conspiracy theories that come out kind of like, oh, <laughs> play another one bites the dust backwards and you'll hear <laughs> worshiping the devil. It's like, yeah. watch Frosty the Snowman like this and you'll see the. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They said, never mind. Let me stop. Um, but no, I, I love it all. I love all of it. And, um, I try, I try real hard to slow down a little bit this time of year because I do enjoy it so much. And I try to, um, I try to enjoy uh, this season through the lens of like seven-year-old me, if that makes any sense. Yeah. The childhood nostalgia of it. Yes. Like, I love it. I, I love all of it. My mama even still brings me a stocking. Nice. My same raggedy ass stocking from when I was a kid growing up. Wow. But I love it. I love it. But this is also the same mother that every year on Valentine's Day still brings me a box of chocolate chip cookies that she makes for me in a little gold box with these busted ass heart stickers all over it that I made when I was probably three. Shout out moms. I mean, for real. It's amazing. It's amazing. But I love it. And like my kids are older now. So you know, it's, it's, it's different. Christmas morning is different. Yeah. A you lot know, it's running not like the, the toys and all that stuff. And they're still hype. I mean, they still do it and, and they pander to us a little bit. They're like, well, what time can we get up? We're going to wake you guys up. All this stuff. We're like, all right. And so it's great. I mean, it's fun. I think that, um, this is a long ways down the road. 
but like literally, like I can wait, but I cannot wait to be like a grandfather and redo the the little kids Christmas morning thing again. Like I love that, man. I I really, really love this time of year. And it's I just I think people are kinder in general around this time of year. Yeah. And I wish somebody would be like, I get pissed off. People are upset. Like, Oh, it's so offensive. Don't say Merry Christmas. Say happy holidays. Man, is this really like what you're going to be bothered by this? No one says Merry Christmas to anybody meaning harm. Or usually most times people don't say Merry Christmas to someone who they know does not directly celebrate it. I don't get how you could be, sure. a, be offended by something out there in the ether. Like I'm not, it, it, it's just it's just it. it's just words like well wishes like th- that's literally it and it people get bothered by that stuff so quick thing yesterday i find out we start getting these phone calls and these oh, emails please in. tell this story okay. i read this yesterday and i was i was livid myself <laughs> so we're starting to get these phone calls and a couple emails about we had donated a training package to a local charity for a silent auction it was purchased. Great, no problem. Okay. It's like six hundred, seven hundred dollar value. Purchased for a couple hundred bucks, I imagine. They put it on Facebook to resell it. Seemingly at a profit. I'm like, hold up. You made this donation to an organization. You got the item from here. I mean, it is your item. Yeah, as a hustler, I respect so, it. For, but as, right? a human, I had, as a human being. I had conflict <laughs> with this, but people are calling us like, hey, this is on Facebook Marketplace. This is on these different groups. Is this legitimate? I was like, she can't sell this thing. And so I, I pulled up, the, found the post. Katie showed me where to look. I pulled it up. I'm looking, in, and this lady is being very transparent. She's having some financial difficulties, some hard times. Unemployed. Uh, Virginia unemployment is taking forever. You know, she's just, she's struggling. And I was like, you know what? Let me just help this lady out. And so I sent her a DM. Boom. Said, hey, I'm Josh Wilson. I own Off Leash Canine Training. Um, I saw that you had purchased a uh, training certificate at an auction. You don't have a need for it. And um, you're trying to sell it. I'm going to go ahead and buy it from you. You don't, you don't need to stress. Buy it at her asking price or like the original? No, Ah. I told her I'd buy it from her for what she bought it for. And then I'd make a secondary donation to the charity. Mm. Okay. So I'm really sorry to hear you falling on some hard times. You're not even gonna have to waste your time with these people who aren't going to do anything on social media. This is just done. And I also get to protect the uh, pricing integrity. Yeah. Of our product. So this is a win for her. This makes sure I don't have some, ridiculous thing running around locally someone's going to show up with this certificate who didn't buy it yeah, i paid and i paid 3k for it, this training it just sounds crazy <laughs> so i'm thinking hey tis the season being a good dude bro the response I, she's like um i'd rather sell it to a friend of mine and it's mine it's fully transferable i can do whatever i like and yeah and i was like well actually it's not like i'm telling you that i'm not going to accept it from anybody but you. well it doesn't have my name on it they just took my money so but here's the thing i know your name and i know that you bought it and i'm not going to accept it from anyone but you so i'm going to pay you what you've listed that you want for it and and it's it's good she snapped back with like crazy attitude and tone i said so here's the deal man like i've offered to purchase it it's no longer an issue for you you're getting what you you were asking for it um and i'm telling you that i'm not going to accept it from anybody else so if you decide to sell it to somebody and they come to me with it i'm going to show them that i told you before you sold it yeah that i won't be accepting it and now it's your problem and now it's going to be your problem again and um I said, but you do you. I was just trying to be helpful. My offer is off the table. And so I took it back. No offer. Oh, boy. She goes, 
wow, you are so unprofessional, blah, 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 blah. I hope this isn't how you run your business and going on and on and on and on. I, I, I was like, oh, here I am now. Now I'm getting into this lady on Facebook, right? Like, who? I don't have time for that crap. It's the last and, place we want to get into it on. Right. And so I just told her, I wrote her back. I said, ma'am, if by being overly generous, thoughtful, considerate is how I run my business, that is how I've always ran it and how I will continue to run it. So you know what? I'm not going to let your behavior change my character. I'm going to buy it from you. When you realize you just walked on this money, reach out to me. and I'm still going to buy it from you. Yeah, because ultimately right. you care more. You don't right. care about the spat. You like, care about, again, the pricing integrity right. of the business. So I said, you, let, you just let me know, and, and I'll still buy it from you in spite of all that. I said, I really hope you have great holidays. I really hope your situation you know, turns around. Let me know. So she hits me back up a little bit later. Yeah, I'll definitely sell to you. I just don't see that I was doing anything wrong. Send me your Venmo. She sends me your Venmo. I purchase it. She's thrilled. She's posting all this stuff on Facebook now, hyping us up, and I'm an angel and, and all of these things. I'm like, that wasn't my intent. I didn't need her to do that. Yeah. But I'm like, people are so quick. You and if she's listening, because she's tried to friend me on Facebook, and we're, we're, I didn't do that. But um, like, it maybe if, if she's listening and in, in hearing this, this isn't a. I'm not coming at you, lady. No judgment. Because like, look, she. I put a post up there which I thought was just comical and and for people to see. Well, she saw the post and she outed herself on the post. She said, "I'm said lady. I apologize." I'm just going through some stuff and whatever. That's some stand up stuff. I, I thought it was awesome. I and I deleted the, I took the post down, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't want people because I got stupid friends who were gonna come sideways and be like, man, Josh is whatever. I didn't want her to deal with that mess. Shout so. out to the friends that are willing to harass <laughs> random people on Facebook for you. Though. You gotta love them all. So I take it down and and it's whatever. But it had me thinking last night about this. And um we're really far off the Christmas movie topic, but it, it's fine. It's how we get here. It is how we get here. And that's what matters that we got here. I really feel like when people are having tough times, right? And we've talked about gratitude over and over and over again on this show. Um, I didn't need this lady to have gratitude. I didn't need her to tell me thank you. I didn't need her to share what I did on social media. I didn't need any of that. I would have hoped that she would have had some sense of internal gratitude for the fact that, hey, I have this problem. I'm trying to hope some random person trusts that this certificate is legitimate yeah. and pays me hundreds of dollars for it. No one's going to do that. So then all of a sudden you get a message from the owner of the company saying, I'm going to take it off your hands. And it's done. Like, I'm like, hey, we, we have to open ourselves up to see when things like that happen that are not normal. Like, these are blessings. Her immediate response, and I think so many people do this, is to miss a blessing because they find a reason to take offense. And you know what I think it was? I don't think she took offense at anything that you said. I think she took more so, I guess it's offense, but personal offense at the fact that you said, hey, I noticed that you got this from an auction, which you donated money to to win it, and now you're trying to sell it. And she, in her mind, probably thought, like, this isn't the best look, but I've fallen right. on hard times. And you weren't even trying to say, like, hey, why are you doing no, this? No, but I started to... with, I'm sorry to hear yeah. you're having some tough times. Because she had that in her, in her post, in the comments. So it, wa it was literally presented in the most innocent of ways. But I think a lot of us are wired to, and we miss those opportunities. And to be, I don't, I can't think of the right word. To respond is begrudgingly. I think it's def good defensively word? almost. Like, yeah. I don't think I've done anything wrong. Yeah. Like defensively, like to, to have to feel like you have to take defense to so many things. And I've been hard up. For money i've been in the worst of situations i know the stress that financial stress can put upon you and concern especially around this time of year you Preach. know when you are when you are a parent and you have kids 
and you're going into this time of year and things are tough and you're trying to make sure, you know, ends are met and there's food on the table and the heat is on and all of those things. And your little kids, all they're fired up about is what? Christmas. And I hope Santa brings me this and I, I want that. And I was, cause that's kids. That's how kids are wired. Like they're not doing anything wrong. And as a, as a parent, you're fighting just to keep the lights on. And then you have this added stress of knowing I don't want to lose the magic of this season from a child standpoint because I'm in this situation. Mm -hmm. And that just heightens everything else. So for me, when I responded to the lady and I'm like, I'm taking my deal off the table. Like as soon as I sent that message to her, I was like, nah, bro, uh, -uh. you got to go back to that. Cause I do not know what her situation is. I know that it's not good. And someone had commented, a, a friend of mine, he's like, maybe her lack of gratitude has to do with her situation. Like her, maybe that her lack of gratitude is why she's in her situation to begin with. And I was like, bro, I said, hopefully she's just having a bad day. Yeah, and it's not always fair to assume, right. you know, like how people ended up in situations. Right, I don't know. I don't know. But I do think, though, that when you're always in cer certain situations, it is 100% because you're just choosing to live in it and not make moves to get out of it. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's not super simple. But you have to start with that gratitude part. You have to start with, if you're defensive of your situation, that means you are choosing to live in your situation. So what do we defend? We defend our homes. We defend our property. If I'm in a bad way, I'm not going to defend it. This is some bullshit I want to get rid of. Yeah. Open the gates. Get the hell out of my house. I don't want this drama here. I don't want these problems here. I don't want this financial stress and burden here. I'm not defending it. I'm doing everything I can to get rid of it. You defend things you want to keep. You defend things that you want to own. Stop that mindset of being defensive over difficulties. Just get rid of them. Get rid of them. And it's not going to happen overnight. But take the small steps. If you are so guarded against everything and everything causes you to be defensive and then take offense and become defensive, you're going to miss every blessing that comes your way. Every opportunity that comes your way because you're blinded. Someone offers you help with something. Don't freak out. Take it. Take it. Because more times than not, the individual who's trying to be generous, who is, is trying to be helpful, whether it's in financial resources, time, other resources, what opportunities they've been where you're at or worse. And they remember it. A lot of people who have a lot of things don't just freely give them away. Yeah, that's definitely a fact. Unless, unless there was nothing they ever had to begin with. And I think when you're trusted with, with, with resources, you have an obligation to help in all kinds of different ways. I'm not saying be a crutch for somebody, but to help. And those that, that had difficulties and have gotten out of difficulties, I think they are more prone to want to help people, you know, along the way. For sure. Because they remember it. So just be, have an open heart. Don't get so defensive. And happy holidays and or Merry Christmas. All of it, man. It's a good time. So that was the Q&A, and I got on a little bit of a thing. Ah, glad we got there, though. Me too. Go Irish. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And we're going to have some good music for you coming out of this. Thanks, Jonathan. See you next time. Charles. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Had a very shiny nose And if you ever saw it You would even say it glows 